Welcome back everyone to this presentation on the Mesozoic to Kenozoic structural geology of Singapore. Graham Isley again. Um, now in this presentation we look at the effects of folding and faulting of Mesozoic, essentially earliest Jurassic, to Kenozoic, latest Cretaceous to possibly early Pleistocene age, uh, as well as the rock types and structures that result. Now this presentation reflects the findings uh, obviously of the recently published uh, Geology and Engineering Geology of Singapore memoir and the Journal of Asian Earth Sciences paper on the Structural Geology of Singapore. And the images in this presentation are, are largely from the new memoir. Now we've seen already that the history of the Mesozoic bedrock of Singapore is inextricably linked with the Permian to Triassic history of the Sukhothai arc structure, um, both in terms of the generation of the multiple plutons of the Bukatima Center, uh, which you can see here developing in those cartoons which we showed in the introductory talk, um, as well as the genetic related, uh, essentially middle to upper Triassic inner four arc Jurong group and Sentosa group successions, which we saw forming in this sort of setting and then later on the Sintosa group in the more mature arc setting. We know now that these Mesozoic strata in Singapore have been deformed into a pattern of northeast translated, uh, northwest southeast trending, ductile, brittle, fold and thrust structures during the latest Triassic to earliest, uh, earliest Jurassic collision and amalgamation of the Sigumasu block with the leading edge of Indochina East Malaya block across what now has become the Benton Road suture zone. The subduction related magmatic complex represented by the Bukatima uh, center plutons uh, likely acted as a backstop to thrusting at this time. Uh, and so there's our, our general setting for the structural geology of Singapore. Obviously a, a, a quite uh, potentially complicated uh, set of circumstances. The Mesozoic bedrock in the south and southwest of, of Singapore preserve a record of ductile and brittle ductile deformation, folds and thrusts, and I've shown the, the traces of the, the main recognized uh, folds are on this map uh, and the passive lava and Mirai thrust structures are shown in the blue dashed lines. Uh, there is clearly a lot of superimposed brittle deformation and the major faults, brittle steep faults, are highlighted in the, the grey and black dashed lines. Suffice to say that the distribution of rock types and bounding structures is, is perhaps not likely to be very straightforward in some regions in this context. Folds and related low angle thrust faults are arranged as an array of decameter scale, generally northwest southeast trending structures, as you can see on the map. Numerous steeply dipping faults are also recognized, uh, many of them transecting those folds and thrusts almost at right angles. And the Bukatima Fault Zone, a major structure that really subdivides the geology in many ways of Singapore, the Bukatima Fault Zone, um, is an important uh, northwest southeast trending subvertical fault zone, likewise cut across by northeast southwest trending faults. So we get this idea of a prolonged history of folding, thrusting and faulting. The Jurong and Sentosa group strata and the Bukatima center plutons are shown undivided on this map. Uh, the Murai and Pasia lava thrusts are important structures which extend all across uh, <coughs> southwest Singapore. The former uh, Murai thrust that is from its type locality at Murai Reservoir up here in the northwest. The principal steep brittle faults identified onshore and extrapolated offshore as best we can are the Henderson Road Fault, uh, the Pepys Road Fault, the Nisun Fault, and the Salatar Fault, <coughs> as well, of course, as the Bukatima Fault Zone that we've already uh, mentioned. The array of fault, uh, faults and folds best 
fits um, with an overall pattern of dextral shear and we'll come back to this diagram uh, later in, in the presentation when we think about the, the uh, characterization of the various fractures that we can see in this shear system. The new digital geological map of Singapore includes cross-section profiles. Uh, these are examples constructed to illustrate the general geometry of the large-scale rock units and the nature of the fold and thrust structures that have a major impact on the distribution of these units in southwest Singapore. These cross-sections also demonstrate the uh, character of the cross-cutting nature of the superimposed uh, steeply dipping brittle faults, including the Bukit Timah fault zone. So we can see that the fold, the array of folds and thrusts, such as the Pasiolaba thrust, the Murai thrust, and then the superimposed and cross-cutting steep structures of the Bukit Timah fault zone, separating the uh, Jurong and Sintosa groups of uh, strata in the south and southwest from the Plutons of the Bukit Timah Centre in the northeast. In this next segment of the presentation, we'll examine the characteristics of the folded and foliated uh, Jurong and Sintosa group strata in southern and southwestern Singapore. But first, we really should take a moment to examine the strongly folded Sanjahat formation rocks that are the oldest exposed rocks in Singapore and which formed a major part of Singapore geology prior to the emplacement of the Bukit Timah Centre intrusions. So here are uh, from Pulau Sajahat, the type locality, here are these um, polydeformed, multiply folded meta mudstone and meta sandstone units um, that, that, that comprise the Sajahat formation uh, at outcrop and looking closely, you can see that uh, the uh, multiple metamorphic fabrics, <coughs> tectonic fabrics that, that uh, characterize these rocks are ever actually overprinted by conspicuous porphyroblasts of the mineral cordierite. Um, they overgrow all of the, the deformation fabrics and they must be the result of contact or thermal metamorphism that is the result of emplacement of the thermotriassic intrusions of the Bukit Timah Center. So these tightly folded and polyphase fabrics observed in the Sajahat formation rocks and of course the contact metamorphism are much more profound than any uh, of the tectonic fabrics or metamorphic fabrics in, observed in any of the Jurong and Sintosa group strata which we will now go on to examine. Jurong and Sintosa group strata in southwest Singapore record ductile and brittle ductile folding and tectonic cleavage formation. And these effects can be observed in almost every outcrop at a variety of scales. So these examples are from uh, Pulau Jong, uh, from St. John's Island and from Lazarus Island. And here we see sort of meter scale, uh, apparently upright folding, there's a hammer for scale. We can see the axial planar cleavage cutting across bedding. In this case, we can see an incline cleavage cutting across uh, lamination, bedding lamination, here's my finger pointing for scale. Uh, and on this uh, outcrop again, we can see uh, bedding clearly transected by a strong um, axial planar cleavage, which is essentially perpendicular to bedding, really telling us that we're in the fold hinge zone, uh, and furthermore telling us that these folds must be inclined. The uh, axial planar uh, foliation is uh, clearly southwest dipping. When we look at the uh, stereonet below, we can see the greater tendency for gentle to moderately southwest dipping strata in this part of the data, but that also that steeply dipping northeast uh, dipping, sorry, to uh, vertical strata uh, are, are not uncommon. The girdle of bedding data uh, from uh, southwest to northeast uh, fits well with the observed northwest southeast trending fold axes and fold hinges observed at outcrop. The best outcrop scale fold in Singapore that I know of uh, can be seen at Tanjan Lokos on uh, St John's Island, at the southwestern, uh, southeastern tip, sorry, of the island. There, sandstone dominated uh, folded. Tanjan Rimmel formation units uh, demonstrate, I'll just trace it out here, 
demonstrate the progressive nature of the deformation affecting the Sintosa group strata. The exposed part of the, the locus anticline that you can see here is the crestal region of an inclined asymmetrical uh, antiformal anticline. Opposed bedding cleavage relationships are clear on the adjacent limbs. And the hinge zone is in fact to the right in this view where the, the cleavage is, uh, we can see perpendicular to bedding. Intense crushing and shearing deformation developed in sandstone units in the inner arc of the fold, in, in the, if this area of the fold uh, is demonstrated here. Um, uh, and that crushing uh, and shearing takes place as the uh, fold tightened. The northeastern limb, this part of the structure, uh, is much more penetratively deformed than the southwest one, such that the intense southwest dipping Fracture cleavage is developed even in meter scale thick sandstone units, a testament to the strength of the deformation involved and the evidence that strain increased as the fold became increasingly overturned towards the northeast, uh, rotating and shearing the, the steepening northeastern limb. And here's Kim Woon Lee uh, examining that uh, penetrative, uh, very strongly developed. Um, uh, fabric, uh, shearing fabric in these uh, thick sandstone units. Folding is relatively rarely observed at core scale. Amongst the best examples are the repeated asymmetrical tight uh, decimeter scale fold closures that occur in Pula Eachowan formation strata in borehole 2A12. Uh, for example, the closure at 35 0.7 meters that I'm showing in this photograph here on the left. The other examples show very clearly the tendency for retrieved core to split along uh, the well-developed uh, cleavage surfaces, um, preferentially so in the finer grain, most strongly cleaved meta mudstone layers. I want now just to concentrate on this uh, area in the yellow circle. This close-up view of the fold hinge featured in the previous slide shows the nature of the tectonic foliation very clearly. There is a well-developed grain-shaped fabric in the uh, sandstone unit, uh, and that uh, the boundary between the sandstone and the meta mudstone unit adjacent is transected and offset by micro shearing characteristic of non-coaxial deformation generated during simple shear. Uh, that is a, a rotational or translational deformation. And so we might expect thrusting to be associated with the fold structures in places at least. Uh, rather than flexural folding or layer parallel slip, it would be indicative of coaxial shortening or buckle folding. Now the core retrieved in uh, borehole 2A12 also demonstrates very clearly that the most strongly folded successions of Jerome group strata may be inverted at the broader scale. And in this preliminary sketch of, of what we could see uh, on the first observations of that core, we, <coughs> we've uh, noted that uh, folding is most intensely developed on the short overturned limbs of these asymmetrical folds observed in core and in places strata is overturned. In this example, um, and now under the microscope, microfolding and shearing of the lithological boundary along here uh, between the tuff layer above and the uh, bioclastic meta mudstone layer below is clear. Both lithologies are clearly cleaved with a well developed tectonic or metamorphic uh, cleavage, slaty cleavage, in, almost in these cases, uh, being developed in both lithologies. So overall, the implied grade of metamorphism observed at outcrop or in thin sections and rocks assigned to both the Jerome and Sintosa group strata is never greater than the lowermost epizone, uh, prenite or peleite fasces. Um, so really we're talking about very low grade metamorphism. Minerals such as sericite mica, chlorite and epidote grow and are aligned within the new foliation surfaces that you can see in each of these thin sections. Uh, views. Uh, every one is cleaved to a greater or lesser extent. Even the tophaceous rock pick up a, a, a penetrative um, 
alignment of, of epidote minerals. Never a very strongly developed cleavage as such, but there is a strong preferred mineral uh, alignment. One of the benefits of such a low grade of regional metamorphism is, of course, that much of the details of the primary sedimentology of these rocks does survive, and so the new lithostratigraphical framework that we've developed is robust. Metamorphic recrystallization does mean, however, that little or no primary porosity survives, although Tanjan Rimmel formation uh, strata may appear somewhat, somewhat more open textured, perhaps suggesting that the experienced slightly shallower burial after compaction and deformation than the Geelong group strata. So now we'll examine the locally intense deformation associated with the discrete thrusts that form an integral part of the fold and thrust structure in south and southwestern Singapore. And to do that we'll go to uh, Murai Reservoir in the western, uh, western water catchment planning area in western or northwestern Singapore uh, where we can see critical detail of the important Murai thrust structure. And here at Murai Reservoir excavations have created excellent 3D, uh, three dimensional uh, exposure that reveal the complex but, but essentially textbook features that are now exposed in the hanging wall of the Murai thrust. The upper image shows you the outcrop on the, the lower image. I've added a line interpretation that illustrates the principal dislocation surfaces seen at outcrop. So the, the black lines, the purple dashed lines are lithostratigraphic boundaries, modified, transposed lithostratigraphic uh, boundaries. Uh, we can see the overall antiformal nature of this particular uh, antiformal stack. We can see the um, discrete faults accommodating extensional surge on the leading edge, the frontal part of the stack where things are uh, being faulted down towards the northeast. And we can also see the oversteepened ramp that marks the subvert uh, marked by the subvertical imbricate structure in the trailing edge of the overall structure. So that's this uh, trailing edge imbricate uh, developed in the on the right hand side of the view. The structural variability revealed at this location is a, is a clear indication to all of what should locally be anticipated elsewhere along the trace of the Murai and for that matter the Passy of Lava thrusts superimposed on any broader scale variability embedding uh, the, in dips, uh, embedding dips, sorry, that would result from folding in those same areas. At Murai Reservoir, uh, when we look closely at the outcrop, we see a, a characteristic anastomosing sinuous penetrative shearing fabric that is ubiquitous throughout. Any discrete lithological units that can be identified are heavily modified and transposed, uh, and the, the, unit, the individual units become lenticular at all scales as a result of the intense shearing deformation. Secondary shears, which you can see picked out here in the slightly darker brown colour, and I'll highlight them now in yellow, um, cross cut the earlier form shear fabric and they're related to formation of the observed antiformal stack. Deformation affects units of sandstone, volcanoclastic sandstone, mudstone and tuff that can all be assigned to the Boon Lay formation. Uh, in other words, these are Jerome group strata. Under the microscope, these intensely deformed rocks uh, preserve lowermost epizone with no development of subgrain uh, morphologies in quartz. Uh, so the, metam the grade of metamorphic recrystallization is always low. Uh, <clears throat> and in oriented samples such as these, the sense of shear is always consistently topped to the northeast, which is the lower left in this particular view, consistent with the measured stretching and mineral lineations at, that we can see and record at outcrop. At the broader scale, the Murai thrust places parts of the Pula Irchoan, uh, Pandan, and uh, lower or older parts of the Boon Lay Formation structurally over uh, at the trace of the, the thrust, uh, Murai thrust, structurally over uh, 
upper or younger part of the Boonlay formation, including the distinctive Clementi member. The scale of displacement on the Murai thrust cannot really directly be precisely constrained, but the style of deformation and the thickness of the sheared philinitic rocks exposed at Murai Reservoir that we've looked at uh, suggests that several hundred metres of northeast directed translation, even a few kilometres, is possible. In this slide, I put together a composite model for the ductile deformation affecting the Jurong and Sintosa group strata in south and southwest Singapore. Uh, and that sort of summarizes, I think, what is going on in terms of that fold and thrust deformation. Tectonic transport is overall towards the northeast. And so in relatively low strain areas, such as Tanjung Lokos and St. John's Island, folds are asymmetrical, but broadly upright. In higher strain volumes, where things are beginning to overturn, uh, bedding would be progressively steepened and transposed on the northeastern limbs of fold sets, such that the stratigraphy becomes increasingly tightly folded, more strongly cleaved, and more typically inverted, for example, as seen in the boreholes in uh, northern Tuas. Ultimately, gently to moderately dipping and laterally extensive thrust discontinuities uh, are observed, uh, such as we see at uh, Murai and Murai Reservoir. Uh, and in these cases, older strata are intensely deformed in the immediate hanging wall of these structures and thrust over younger strata. To summarize this part of the, uh, the deformation story, this these cross sections illustrate the geometry of the folding that affects the Jurong and Sintosa group strata. We've seen these uh, before, they, they, they are associated with the geological map. The location of the sections is in this little inset down here. Um, so we see the cross architecture of the folding, we see the position of the uh, Pasir Laba thrust zone and the Murai thrust zone. The panel of lithostratigraphy, the Jurong uh, and Sintosa group strata, um, transported in the hanging wall of the Murai thrust is in reality a thrust nap. It's of sufficiently large scale uh, and we have named this the Murai nap. So it's this part of the, the cross section really uh, comprises uh, what we can think of as the Murai nap. As currently understood, the Pasir Laba thrust, the Pasir Laba thrust zone, likely represents shortening within the Murai nap that just preceded translation and shortening accommodated on the structurally lower Murai thrust, uh, developed uh, as the thrust system as a whole propagated towards the northeast. As to timing, fold and thrust deformation in Singapore is clearly superimposed on the Jurong and Sintosa group strata. Numerous successions of now dated tooth interbedded with these strata were all erupted at around about uh, 400, uh, sorry, 240 to 243 million years ago. Mesozoic collision of uh, Sibamasu and uh, the Indochina East Malaya block uh, must have culminated after this date. That is, in effect, the Indocinian orogeny, uh, at least in the uh, future Singapore region. The youngest dated S type granite plutons in the western belt of Peninsula Malaysia are about 200 million years old, suggesting that the Indocinian collision was essentially complete by this time in the earliest Jurassic. And really, we have no more refined age constraints currently available from the, the rocks in Singapore. The oldest strata overstepping the fold and thrust deformation in that area are themselves, and um, that are themselves uh, unaffected by folding. That is, the Kuzu formation are believed to be no older than Berryasian at lower Cretaceous in age, younger certainly than uh, 145 million years, uh, the age of the youngest detrital zircon so far recovered from those strata. So now we go on to look at the faults, another brittle deformation in Singapore. Our treatment of <coughs> Singapore faults and fault rocks follows BGS protocols. Uh, there are a number of points to consider really. Is the fault rock strong or weak, for example? The rock will be broken, clearly fractured, but are those fractures healed or mineralized? And if so, with what? Um, is it mineral quartz? Uh, strong, obviously, is it the mineral calcite, relatively weaker, uh, mixtures of different minerals, uh, if they are 
calcite filled fractures and healed fractures as dissolution actually taking place subsequently and removed some of that healing mineralization. Can we recognize multiple phases of fracturing, of fill, of dissolution, and over what sort of time scale? So those are the sorts of things that we've been looking at. The most significant fault features affecting the bedrock geology of Singapore are now identified as arrays of northeast southwest, uh, north northwest, south southeast, and northwest southeast trending fault structures. Uh, there are subsidiary north south uh, faults, and east northeast, west southwest is also a significant trend in this array of structures. However, very few faults are actually exposed in the modern urban landscape of Singapore, uh, and modern imagery, satellite or similar, is severely compromised by that landscape. In many senses, the faults are invisible at surface. The majority of brittle faults in Singapore. Uh, at bedrock are likely to be very steep dipping or subvertical, judging by the relatively straight uh, fault traces that we can interpret from the currently available data. And these faults or fractures observed in uh, outcrop are small scale features, typically with centimeter to decimeter scale displacements. No natural exposure of cataclysmite or other fault rock is known in Singapore. The combined effects of penetrative uh, tropical weathering and erosion are likely to have efficiently removed any strongly fractured cataclastic rocks. The BCA deep ground investigation boreholes were mostly drilled vertically and virtually none of them unfortunately have intersected major faults. There is one data set and that's the old black and white aerial photography that does pick out a whole series of uh, topographical features that have geological significance. So this is in the uh, future National University of Singapore campus and we can see these uh, uh, pronounced and offset topographical ridges which put the uh, uh, geological interpretation on and we look at the uh, places we've been able to see outcrop with the yellow dots for example we can see that uh, faulted imbricate thrusts are present in the Murai thrust zone here on Kent Ridge uh, and they have clearly been offset uh, across very steep relatively uh, straight trace faults uh, offsetting things with a, a sort of a, a typical sinistral or left-handed sense of displacement. So these fault features are mappable just, uh, but they are underrepresented in uh, the borehole data. Good examples of fractured uh, rock of cataclastic fault rock and fracture fillings are encountered in places in core. You can see some of them here, but no single BCA deep ground investigation borehole has been reported that was drilled into, through, and away from the damage zone associated with a discrete brittle structure. In the example shown, we can see uh, these pitted structures where calcite that was healing these uh, fractures. Uh, has been dissolved away, uh, quartz and some calcite survives in these cases. So the removal of calcite and the weakening of the rock mass as a result is, is really rather uh, variably distributed throughout the rock mass. In this example of cataclysite, uh, the protolith, the, the original rock type is a tuffite. Um, the cataclysmite is weak and strongly altered and very badly broken in this case by drilling related damage and it can be a challenge to discriminate between that drilling related damage and the um, uh, fault rock cataclysis, uh, the, the, the brecciation that has taken place in association with the, the faulting as such. Um, in the, the, the bottom example we can see a, a fracture that must have been open uh, it's been filled in with a, a fine-grained uh, cataclastic uh, material, ultra-cataclysite, uh, which occasionally contains some uh, larger fragments uh, derived from the wall rock. Parts of the fracture system have been infilled by calcite. If you look very closely, you can see that the last thing that has really happened is a, is a very thin um, healing mineralization uh, veining of, of calcite developed in places along the walls of the fracture between the, uh, the main fill as it were and the wall rock on either side. Many fracture zones and areas of cataclysmite are, are healed by secondary mineralization, typically chlorite, quartz, calcite. 
um, hematite as well. Commonly healing calcite has been partially removed uh, or in some cases completely removed by dissolution and in fact locally new calcite crystals have regrown in the voids previously created by dissolution uh, and in indeed may still have been growing immediately prior to drilling. Uh, some of that uh, calcite growth will be modern in that sense. Thin sections of cataclastic fault rock, uh, angular fragments of various sizes can be seen uh, and dark, very fine grain zones of intense microfracturing uh, are observed separating the uh, fractures. The matrix to these fragments typically comprises an argillaceous mix of fine grain sericite, white mica and clay, which is probably illite, and chlorite. Secondary microporosity can form within and alongside these fractures and in any uh, associated damage zones. The Boca Tima Fault Zone is the largest and arguably uh, most important discontinuity in Singapore. It's essentially the boundary between the plutonic rocks of the Boca Tima Centre in the northeast and the Jurong and Sentosa group strata in the southwest and we've looked at these uh, cross sections a couple of times now. Fault bound lenses or slices of the lower Cretaceous Bucket Batok Formation uh, strata are spatially associated with this fault zone and despite all of that detail the Bucket Tima fault zone is not currently exposed anywhere at surface and its character and even its precise location are not yet fully understood or well understood. We know that a fault of this size will likely have formed as a set of anastomosing strands within a fault zone that pinched and swelled both vertically and laterally. Multiple strands that apparently accommodate fault displacement and strain are observed uh, in the closely spaced uh, 2B6 and, and 1B10 series of boreholes. Uh, and <clears throat> in this interpretive section, we show these multiple strain, uh, multiple strands making up the fault zone. The range of myelinitic and cataclastic fault rocks intersected in these boreholes together imply that this structure has a long and complex history. The size of the vertical displacement, for example, uh, perhaps around 10 kilometers required to juxtapose the rocks of the Bukatima Center from the original emplacement depth to the position now adjacent to the metasedimentary Jurong group strata, which have been followed in thrust, is considerable, possibly, as I say, around 10 kilometers. But there really is very little evidence uh, as yet to constrain the size of any horizontal displacement on the Bukit Tima fault zone, but it is likely to be considerable and repeated. The Henderson Road fault, uh, picked out here in the heavy black line, is one of the most prominent fault structures now identified on the, the new digital geological map of Singapore, but sadly it's not exposed today. We interpret the fault as extending from the, the Fort Canning area, where it uh, juxtaposes Kuzu formation against the rocks of the Bukatima Centre, um, across the Kent Ridge uh, Faber area and Henderson Road, and apparently continues offshore to the south of Jurong Island. The extent to which a continuation of the Henderson Road Fault might be traced to the northeast of the um, Bukatima Fault Zone is tempting, but it's not clear that, that we can really say anything very precise about that uh, uh, continuation. The abrupt change in preserved lithostratigraphical level across the Henderson Road Fault, uh, where we see Sintosa Group Strata as opposed to Jerome st Group Strata, um, uh, Sintosa in the southeast and Jurong in the northwest. That significant uh, change suggests that uh, a, a probably quite a major down to the southeast displacement occurred across this structure, across the trace of the Henderson Road Fault prior to fold and thrust deformation. Uh, no single fold trace is uh, we can prove continuous across the trace of the Henderson Road Fault. They all seem to be offset, but we see very similar structures on either side, just different stratigraphy. So it seems as if the Henderson Road Fault accommodated down to the southeast movement before the fold and thrust um, deformation was developed and then moved again afterwards. 
Um, the Henderson Road fault bends from a, a, an east north east west south west to a more north east south west trend in the Kent Ridge to Fort Canning area, uh, apparently forming a, a sinistral, uh, it seems, pull apart uh, structure in combination with the Pecos Road fault. And it's likely that these faults were hard linked to a significant extent during their shared displacement history. The Nisun fault and the Sanitar fault traces are not significantly modified from previous interpretations. There is a strong spatial association between the Nisun fault and the western limit of the Bedok formation against the plutonic rocks of the Bukhtima Center at uh, surface and near surface. However, the extent to which this fault, or for that matter, the Salatar fault, may have been active before, during, or after deposition of the Bedok Formation remains unclear. Significant movement on many of the faults occurring in Singapore appears largely to have ceased by the time uh, of uh, deposition of the Bedok Formation in the Neogene or, or thereabouts. So, Taken all together, the full array that we see here of uh, northeast southwest trending, of north northwest south southeast trending, of northwest southeast trending, and subsidiary north south and east northeast west southwest trending structures um, that all transect the Singapore region and seem to have form broadly at the same time. They're broadly contemporaneous, although some of them may have a longer episode of, of movement, exactly the, the Book of Tima fault. So these range of orientations all fit well with the later Cretaceous to possibly Paleogene dextral shear regime recognized across peninsular Malaysia, such as we see in the, the book back uh, fault zone, for example. And so these all uh, these factors all fit well with regional geological considerations as well as just the story in Singapore. The maximum compression direction, uh, sigma one, seems to be orientated about 010 to uh, 190 degrees north, and within this uh, dextral shear regime, the north northwest to south southeast orientated fractures would equate to R1 regional shears. Northeast southwest uh, orientated fractures to R2 regal shears, which uh, in R sinistral uh, as observed. Subordinate north south fractures would equate to extension or to uh, normal faults. The northeast southwest trending features are very likely to have formed by reactivation of fractures formed in the late Triassic as ductile deformation, folding and thrusting waned, and the stacked and deformed. Jurong and Sentosa group strata cooled and responded to regional stresses in a more brittle fashion. Northwest southeast trending uh, structures, uh, such as the Bukitima fault zone, would equate to uh, P shears that would be dextral in this late Cretaceous regional stress regime, and the east northeast. Uh, west southwest oriented fractures would equate to X shears, uh, sinistral, uh, and possibly forming a little bit later than everything else in the system. As far as we can judge on the data available, R1 and R2 regal shear offsets uh, in this race seem typically to be rather small, of the order of 100 meters or less, um, upon left lateral offsets for uh, R2 can be demonstrated. The X shears seem to represent uh, perhaps rather larger offsets of perhaps 500 meters or so, but in the absence of any tightly constrained fault cutoff data, these estimates are, however, rather speculative, it has to be said. The precise timing of any individual fault movements is also unclear. Emplacement of the approximately uh, 98 million year old uh, Pulo Sukudo Pluton may indicate the oblique extensional faulting at that time in the Cretaceous. As, it, uh, as the pluton has a chemistry that is suggestive of magma generation and, in place, uh, and in placement during extension. So that really concludes, I think, everything I want to say about the structural geology of Singapore and the features that we can see. I'm sure you have many questions. I'll do my best to, to deal with those. Thank you.